Greetings and thank you for the opportunity to come to you today, spend a few moments in God's Word and prayer. And uh, we are drawing close to Christmas Day and we are looking at this whole journey of God becoming a man and each aspect of that journey. I know we're coming close to Christmas Day when we celebrate the birth of Christ, but obviously the birth of Christ was towards a purpose. And that was so that He could become the redeeming sacrifice for our sins. 1 John chapter 2 verse 2 says, And He Himself is the propitiation or the payment, a redeeming sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Why did God become a man? He came for this primary purpose that He would be the payment for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the entire human race, those before, those at that time, those in time to come, that He would pay for the sins of the whole world. Now, as we have been emphasizing, it took God to become a man, to qualify such a man to be able to pay for the sins of the whole world. Now think about this. If we were in some way to quantify the sins of the world, there, there is just, it's just an unimaginable number if we were to put a number to it. And that number will obviously keep on growing. So the sins of the world was, is immense. It's great. It's something we can't even put a number two. And for anyone to be qualified to pay for the sins of the whole world, for the entire human race, past, present, and future, it's unimaginable which human person could qualify to do that. No human person, no human being qualified. And that's why it took God to become a man and in the person of Jesus Christ to live was born through a miraculous conception, who was the eternal Word incarnate, who walked in complete obedience to the Father, who lived a sinless, perfect life. And it took such a human person to become qualified even to bear one of the numerous sins of this whole world. And the Bible says so emphatically that this person, Jesus Christ, God who became man, took upon himself the entirety of all the sins, past, present, and future, of the entire human race. His sacrifice, his death on the cross, his offering of his own life on the cross, was the one and only atonement necessary and sufficient and ever qualified to pay for the sins of the whole world. And the Bible says, that was enough. He is the payment for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. What a joy, what a thought, that God Himself on the cross paid for our sins, for the sins of the whole world. And what satisfaction, what assurance to know that it's God who did it. If somebody else had attempted to do it, there would still be questions in our mind, but when God says, I did it, everything is satisfied. Let's worship Jesus for that. Lord, we thank you that you, O oh God, in the person of Christ, paid for every sin, for all our sins, so that we could be forgiven. We thank you and we worship you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in to Living Supernaturally. For more resources to strengthen your spiritual walk, please visit apcwo.org.